Hey Gear Seekers, I'm Nick. You may or may not remember this PC that I've got right here. This was my main gaming PC for about a year, but since we built this PC, I don't think you're seeing it on your screen right now, I actually haven't turned this on at all. So what I'm gonna do today is liberate this PC from its bounds and tear it all apart because we haven't done a water-cooled teardown in a while and this has been sitting on my office floor for about, I'm gonna say about two months, just without being used. So come with me on a little bit of a journey as we pull apart this amazing gaming PC. It's gonna be a little bit sad, maybe a little bit emotional, but I just don't want it to sit there and gather dust for any longer. Let's do a teardown thing. I like to use teardowns of custom water cooled PCs as a bit of a guide to show you guys how to do it if this is something that you're going to be doing. However, just be aware that every single water cooled PC is different and this one is no exception to that rule. This has got a couple little quirks and it's got some things that shouldn't technically fit in the case that I use. I'm gonna pull off the side panel while these things running so you guys who haven't seen the video can see what it looks like in all its glory because this is one gorgeous PC. This is in the Corsair 4000D and it's got a 3090, a 5900X and 32 gigs of RAM. And at the time, this thing was an absolute monster. It still is an absolute monster. Uh, don't get me wrong, it's, it's a beast. I absolutely love it. So when I built this, I actually did a few things to make this easy for pulling apart. I installed this little drain valve here, which we're going to put a tube in and drain the whole loop. One thing I'll always recommend is putting a towel underneath the PC. There's a couple reasons why. Now it depends on where you're pulling your water-cooled PC apart, but the reason why I'd recommend this is not only does it stop you getting fluid on your tabletops, right? It's got dual purpose. It allows you to slide the PC around really easily as well, which is probably something you're gonna be doing if you're pulling apart a water-cooled PC. I've always got a bit of soft tube laying around with a fitting on the end that allows me to screw in to whatever drainage system that I've built into any of the loops that I build here on the channel. Especially my own personal rigs, whereas I build them with maintenance in mind, whereas if I'm building a normal custom loop, I'll just drain it uh, without a drainage system, which is something we might cover in a video as well if you want a super clean looking loop. I've already got a bucket on the floor to catch all the coolant, but the way this drain works is you just unscrew this cap on the top, and then I'm gonna screw this fitting into the drain valve. For those who are interested, this is how I'm draining it. It's just a regular bucket and I've just taped the tube to the edge of it so it doesn't flop about and get cool and all over the floor. I'm gonna uncap the top of the pump res combo. This allows the coolant to run freely. It's not the highest point in the loop, which would be ideal, but it's, it's good enough. And essentially what we're going to do is this valve's pretty cool. All you do is this sleeve that's around the fitting, you pull that outwards and towards you and it opens up everything and lets it flow freely. It's better than having a tap because it's a lot more compact and it's basically a collar on a fitting that allows you to drain it. So we'll just let that drain out. All that really did was empty out the pump res combo we need to clear out the GPU. Now there's one way that I've done in the past the vertical GPUs that works. I'm, the inlet pipe on this side of the GPU, I'm gonna loosen up this fitting here and it's, it's gonna make a mess guys. Oh, and that actually relieves some of the pressure inside of this part of the loop and then it puts it back into the pump res combo. But what I'm gonna do is I actually wanna empty out this tube I hate doing this like this, but it's just got to be done. Another thing to note with this loop is I actually designed it with the flow order to be reversed. So the direction is it comes out of the pump res combo, goes into the CPU, comes out of the CPU into the top radiator, then out of the top radiator into the GPU, and then the GPU returns into the front rad and then back down into the pump res combo. So to, to clear this out, I'm gonna use a little trick that I've shown on the channel before, but because the loop order is reversed, 
this should mostly work to clear out the coolant. So this fitting here on the GPU, we're going to remove it and I'm going to attach another pipe to the GPU directly. And now because the front radiator is completely removed from the loop, we can blow air into the GPU and push all of the coolant back out into the pump res combo and out through this pipe into the bucket. That's the idea anyway, let's see if it works. The idea really is to empty out the GPU so we can pull the GPU out of the loop as well so we can get access to everything behind the GPU because in a vertical GPU setup like this, it blocks everything. Getting lightheaded now. <laughs> well, pull out the power cables, which I probably should have done earlier. It's all happening here today, ladies and gents. Can't believe this is finally coming apart. And out comes that 3090, hopefully. Oh wait, let me guess, it's got an RGB cable connected to it. It sure does. <laughs> Let's try that again. A lot of people will say that opaque coolants will end up clogging up all the microfins and whatnot and making it really dirty. This looks pretty good to me. The only thing that is weird that I noticed is the jet plate came out and I'm guessing this came out when I was blowing air through it. I don't think the jet plate was out the whole time because I probably would have seen it when I was using the PC. I did actually pull this block apart once. There's a tiny bit of corrosion here though and there's a couple little bits of leached dye around the edge of the O-rings as well that you'll probably notice too but I'm not gonna be using this water block again. I'm probably just gonna clean it and put it into storage. This is the end of the 3090 in its water cooled form because I'm gonna be returning this back to stock with the stock cooler. I always keep the stock coolers if I'm water cooling stuff just in case I wanted to revert it. And this one's definitely going back. Now that the GPU is out, everything else is rather straightforward. So it shouldn't be too hard to pull the rest of the loop apart. Another thing I wanted to mention is the front radiator, because of the design of the loop and because of where the front radiator is and how the coolant runs through it, that is definitely going to have a whole stack of coolant in it. For the top radiator, the way that I did this is so janky. So I use the original holes on this side to hold in the radiator. And then I use some of just the mesh holes on the top of the case for the other screw holes so I can push the whole radiator back so we could get clearance for the GPU and all the tube runs and everything as well. It is super jank, but guys, when you're custom water cooling PCs, not everything is always going to fit exactly, especially if it's out of specification. So don't feel bad if you're gonna do something like that because if it works, it works. This is gonna be a bit tricky to maneuver, but it should work. Oof. Oof. Oh, okay, that came out. Oof. They almost gave me a heart attack. We can finally liberate the motherboard from its prison. I was going to keep it as a bit of a showpiece system as well, but I just decided not to because it's a waste of hardware. It could be used for other things and other projects. Try not to spill any coolant on the way out. There it goes. This may be the trickiest part of pulling this whole thing apart because the front radiator is installed in such a weird way. Look how dirty this is. Mmm. Mmm. <coughs> that pump res combo has like custom made brackets that I made to mount it to the radiator. So it would give me the perfect offset for everything. It's just two screws holding it in. Okay, here we go. Essentially, it's just two bits of metal that I trimmed with some tin snips to kind of be at an angle and line up with the holes on the radiator that hold the fans on the backside of the radiator. 
And that's all I had mounting it in place. Now when you're modding cases and doing things that shouldn't fit, there's always gonna be stuff like this because not everything is exactly perfect when you're doing custom water cooling. And if, like I said before guys, if it works, it works. And this definitely worked for about a year. And I actually have done this on many water cool builds in the past. Final piece of this puzzle, getting that front radiator out. I don't remember this being easy to get in. Hopefully it's easy to get out. Uh, why did I put five screws in here? What's wrong with me? These Leon Lee fans come apart. Fans from the frame. Just to get one out at a time. Well, not one out at a time, but I can pull them out through the front that way. Okay. Hopefully that makes it easy. This, this thing is going to be full of coolant. sounds pretty full. How much coolant is in here? Comment down below before I do it and see if you're right. Okay, let's tip her out. If you shake more than twice, you're playing with it. It's at least 15 shakes. I'm definitely playing with it. On the original build video, I often get asked how I connected all of the Leon Lee Uni fans into a Commander Pro to do RGB, and if I would ever make a video talking about the adapter that I created, the answer is I don't think it's a uh, interesting enough thing to make a whole video. Maybe I'll make a short on how to make it, but essentially the way this works is I cut up a Corsair cable and I got a regular RGB cable and I got the pinouts and the wiring for each cable. Basically, this end plugs into the Corsair controller. This end plugs into a normal uh, three pin five volt addressable RGB connector. And then on the other end of that connector is one of these connectors, which is like another three pin connector with a clip on it that you typically find on the V1 Unifans. That then connects into a six way deep cool hub that uses the same RGB controller. And that's how I did all the lighting in the case. And I used IQ to do everything. So there's a very simple explanation for that. The water cooled gaming PC is finally apart than it is bittersweet but my new gaming pc is just so much better and it's just so much more powerful but this thing was an absolute monster while it lasted and if you like the music you heard here i make all the music it's available by clicking that join button right down there down below and if you would do me the absolute honor of subscribing hit the subscribe button do all of those things once again thank you so very much for watching i'm your boy nick with gear seekers you peak we seek and let's have a look at this computer in its former glory. Just so you can see how beautiful it used to be. Thanks for watching and enjoy this bit of a flashback. <laughs>